How did we get from this, racing around on city streets with scores of onlookers, to this, racing around at over 200 miles per hour on a purpose-built track? How did racing cars change the auto industry? To answer these questions, we need to understand a little about racing and car makers. The car has been around for a long time, with steam engine variants existing before the internal combustion engine. But once a new mode of transportation is invented or discovered, people will try and outdo each other. Automobile racing was already well established in Europe, but Vanderbilt wanted American automakers to also create better cars and believed a major trophy in the US would encourage the industry. In 1904, the first Vanderbilt Cup was established in New York. Racing attracted many men who wanted to test their skill, endurance, and determination. Men like Louis Strange, Ralph De Palma, George Heath, and Louis Chevrolet. With victory at racing came substantial cash prizes, fame, and sometimes sponsorship. Louis Chevrolet, founder of the Chevy Motor Company and GM, was started as a race car driver, takes a break from racing to enjoy an ice cold Coke. Racing attracted more than just thrill-seeking men. It also attracted thrill-seeking women. One of the earliest was Dorothy Lovett. She often raced in the shorter races like Brighton Beach. She even set several speed records. She, however, would be banned from many of more prestigious races, often on the pretext of safety, but more likely to preserve the egos of other drivers. However, racing was a very dangerous sport. The early vehicles lacked almost every safety feature required today. There were limited brakes, no seat belts, no crumble zones, or no roll cages. Drivers were expected to throw themselves clear if they were in a rollover. Racing could even be deadly to spectators. Racing would bring many improvements, but it was not the Vanderbilt sponsored race that brought them. Instead, it was a race from New York to Paris sponsored by Lee Martin that would introduce changes to the mechanics of cars. For example, a heating tube for the air intake and a solution to be used instead of water that does not freeze, an early version of antifreeze, were introduced for this endurance contest. Races would continue becoming more popular with Savannah, Chicago, Santa Cruz, Atlanta, and Brighton Beach all having major races. Henry Ford even built racers for these events, his famous 999, shown here, driven by Barney Oldfield. The more races, the greater the demand for cars. The average Joe wanted to own a car for his own enjoyment and status symbol. We know this because it is reported in the Boston Globe and all other major papers at the time. Henry Ford recognized a gap and designed his Model T to meet this consumer need. He used the mass production methods of the assembly line used in other industries such as textile manufacturing. So, in a little over 100 years, we went from cars with open top, no safety, and a top speed of around 80 miles per hour, to enclosed cars with anti-lock brakes, airbags, and a top speed of over 200 miles per hour, all because of racing, creating the demand for mass-produced and innovating safety and convenience features.